What's going on YouTube? Dave here from Signalmore.com. Hey, it's been a while. I'm back. Uh, before I get started, I apologize for my voice. I'm working on a little bit of a cold, so, and the audio may be a little screwy. My audio on my laptop is uh, non-functional, so I'm doing this on my iPhone. Anywho, today we're going to talk about Desire State Configuration Manager and how to uh, configure DSC to enable advanced auditing on a server that is, say, in a DMZ or a server that's not on your domain. So first thing we're going to do right now, I'm on my SCCM server, which is what I'm installing DSC on. So I have already installed it, but these are the steps. So first thing you got to do is install a few modules. And I'll have all this code on the website kind of broken down step by step. Second thing you'll need to do is install certificate services. And the installation is all the defaults, just a root CA. That's all you're going to need. Uh, literally a default installation. Next, next, next. Once you do that, we're going to use this code to extract a certificate for our DSC pool server. And I got the, this is not my code. I got it from uh, a website online and I will post that in the code on the website. So once I have my certificate, I need to copy that certificate to my client, any client that I'm going to use off of this DSC server. And I have already done that, so I will skip that process. Next thing you need to do is actually do the configuration of Desire State Configuration Manager on your pool server. So this is the basic configuration. And I think, I think 100% of this is just a default installation that I pulled off of Microsoft website somewhere. Uh, one thing to keep note of is this is where your registration key is going to be. You're going to need to get the alphanumeric uh, registration key out of this text file to put in the LCM configuration that goes on your um, clients. Uh, so basically all we're doing here is we're cr creating a GUID, which is what we'll use for our registration key down here in the code. We're going to get that cert information. And that function above is going to take a couple of parameters, the cert information, the cert thumbprint, the registration key, which is, again, that good. And then it's going to output the MOF files to CDSC. And you can see that here. Once we do that, we can start the configuration. So you're just going to start DSC configuration with the path where your MOF file is. Wait and verbose will give you some... Uh, better information as far as what's going on with the configuration. No red is a good thing. Once you get no red, you should be good to go. Uh, my computer name is named SCCM, so this would be the path or the uh, URL to my web full server. Well, actually, I already have it here. So this is what you should get if and when your DSC configuration is complete and it is functioning properly, some uh, XML output on the web side of it. So at this point we have DSC con installed, configured. So the next thing we're going to do is create our configuration for our MOF files. So I got this module or resource from GitHub DSC or Audit Policy DSC. So basically what it does, it pulls all the audit policy configuration from this CSV file, which I will show you how to get the format of the CSV file here in a few minutes. So this part I'm going to actually run because I haven't run it yet. Okay, so I just loaded that function into memory. I'm going to run it. Actually, I want to do this first. I want to change path to... CDSC. So I have everything in the same file path. Okay, there it created my MOF file. Now I need to create a checksum for that MOF file. Now everything should be in CDSC audit policy. And there you can see the two files. So that has created my configuration for my client's to pull from the pool server. 
Now at this point, I just need to package everything up and put it in the correct file path uh, in the PowerShell program files for the clients to look for. And this is how you can do that. So I'm basically, I'm going to tell it where to pull my MOF files from. And then these are included in the resources that we uh, installed at the first step. Basically what this does is it packages up the resources, puts them in a file location on the pool server so your client machines don't have to go out on the web from PowerShell Gallery and pull down the resources. They pull it all from the server. I bet this is going to fail. Yep. What I did wrong there is I didn't run this as an administrator. So if you get that red error, you probably didn't run it as an administrator. That's probably what your problem is. Okay, that's more better. No red that time. So now we can go into the program files of my pool server and we'll see in the DSC service configuration. So this is my server moth file. This is moth and the checksum that my clients are going to pull down, my server client. And these are the modules it's going to need to run that configuration. So at this point, the DSC part of it is pre, or the pull server part of it's done. We're good to go here. All right, so now we'll switch over to the client part. So this is just another server. And as you can see there, it's logged on locally to the server with administrator accounts, not on a domain. So this is our basic LCM configuration. It's basically telling the client where to pull the configurations from. This is the website or the web address for my pool server. So you can, before you run this configuration, you can test it. And that's working fine. Uh, I use the IP address here because, again, this is not on the domain, so DNS is not resolving my SCCM server to this IP address, so that's where we got that. This is the registration key, and I forgot to show you that in the pool server side. So it is in DSC service registration key, so that is the code that you will need for the LCM configuration. And let's run this in memory. Okay, so we have our MOF files created. Now we can go ahead and set the DS, the local configuration manager. Okay, so now that's done. It's going to take DSC a while to do its thing and the computer to register and actually pull a configuration. Uh, so through the power of editing, I'm going to skip the uh, setting here and watching it do its thing. And I will bring you back. Okay, so we're back. Took about probably 15 minutes for DSC to do whatever it does in the background. Uh, basically what we're looking for is, so you remember in the configuration on our DSC server, and of course I gotta log back in. When we created that MOF file, we told it to look on in C audit.csv to pull our configuration. So one of my big questions when I started looking into how to do this was what does the CSV file format have to be? And I couldn't find anywhere on the interweb that told me that. So this is the only way I figured out how to do it. Uh, if you don't put an audit file in the root of your C drive, like I don't have it here, DSC is going to create its own in the temp with some default settings. So what you can do is this is that CSV file. All right, so this is the contents of our temp file, our temp CSV. So this is what it has to look like when you're actually making your configuration. This is what Windows or DSC 
spits out to you if you configure it and you don't have a CSV file there in C CSV. So we can change this. And actually, let's run, make sure it's running, or it's actually that configuration on the client. So this is what will tell us using the old audit pull command. Uh, looks the same. So let's change these all to security system extension is the only one we're going to audit. Security system extension. So we want to copy this down to here. And then everything else gets a no auditing. Okay, so if we do this right, say this in the right location, we refresh our DSC configuration, it should set audit or advanced audit policy to only audit system or security system extension. So let's save this. And remember we gotta copy it to this location and we wanna call it audit.csv because that's what's in our uh, LCM configuration. So let's go back to our client. Now we want to refresh the DSC configuration using this command. Okay, so it looks like it works. Let's run audit pull again to see what we got. And as you can see, it pulled our configuration. So that is how you turn on advanced auditing with Desire State Configuration Manager. And some of you that have lasted to the end of this video, and I know it's long, are asking yourselves, why the hell do I need to use DSC for advanced auditing configuration when I can do it with group policy? Well, my only, my use case would be if I have a public facing web server or application server or some kind of server in a DMZ outside of my network, I probably don't want that on my domain. So I can use DSC to manage that thing, to manage it with audit policy, I'll probably do another video managing uh, a DMC box using uh, with the WSUS and a variety of other things. So anyway, I appreciate you hanging with me. I know this is long, uh, but I hope you get some use out of this video. I will break the code down into pieces on the website so you can download the code. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up. I try to get a response to as many as I can, but I don't guarantee anything. Uh, and if you have video recommendations, send them my way using the contact information on the website don't forget to hit subscribe share it with your buddies your friends your mom your dad whoever and i'll see you next time